Okay, we're going live. And we are live. Can you hear me? Yes, Chuck, you're coming through. You just can't see me, right? I can't see you, but I do hear you, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Hey, Mark, I changed the settings so you can also share your screen whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you. So I may leave before you're done. What time will that be? What? Oh, I'm on here now, but. You are? What time? Well, if it's just you, Chuck, we're not going to have a quorum. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. you know this well enough, you could do it on your own. <laughs> it's still uh, five more minutes. Yeah, we got some time. We'll let people. No, I, 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 I really like the format of the of the uh, information and all the footnotes you put on there. It really helped. Okay, good. We'll, we'll go through that and talk through how people feel about this format and stuff. And that's all Gretchen, so we can personalize it if there's some other suggestions. Mike. Good morning. Thanks for dropping off the packet. No worries. I love the excuse to get out of the office. <laughs> well, I uh, I saw on the ring that you you know you that when you rang the doorbell, but I was out um, off the coast fishing. So I couldn't get to my phone fast enough to say thank you. No worries. Did you catch yeah. any fish? We did. Yeah. Yeah, what kind? Um, they're still, uh, uh, it's, the water temp is still very cold. So a lot of deep uh, rock cod, you know, rockfish fishing. We, uh, my a good friend wanted to take his grandson out. 
and he, his grandson had a day off of school. So uh, we just stayed local and went out and out in front, but it was absolutely amazing. We counted over 50 container ships fully loaded sitting, oh, yeah. sitting out there. It's a real problem. Yeah. Well, we were wondering how much parable, perishable stuff was out there. Yeah. You know, because I mean that the, the, they were they were they were going nowhere. Computer chips. I, I hope they're full of con computer chips. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay. So we are live on YouTube, and we'll just wait for the rest of the team to show up and get a quorum and then we can get rolling. It's not even 7.30 yet. I'm moving Randy over right now as a panelist. Thank you. morning. I am moving, is it Leia? Le 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 uh, Ray, I believe. Right, okay. And Wendy too. Good morning. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Was everybody able to navigate the agenda okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. We, we moved to a new system and um, it doesn't provide like the PDF version. It's all on the web. Um, for anybody who would like a printed version, I am happy to prepare the agendas for you. Um, and if we can get it out ahead of time, I can mail it. Um, otherwise, um, Mark and I can prepare the packets for you to pick up. Yeah. Well, Mark delivered me a, a whole packet and I appreciate that. No problem. I'm an Amazon driver on the side, so it works out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Packages are much more cooperative. <laughs> you can do them both. So. All right. Hello, Erin. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I think, uh, let me see if there was anybody else who was anticipating being here. We didn't get a response from everybody, but um, I think others, uh, I'm a pre Good. Morning, everyone. I think all we're missing is uh, Jacob. Let me check. Yeah, I think that's all we're. So I have not heard whether uh, Jacob Tujian is attending or not. He he checked off that he would be here, so. Can we give another minute or so? Mike, you decide. I think we can go ahead and get started and we'll just have, we'll have Jacob chime in if, uh, when, it, when he shows up. So let's call the meeting to order. Um, can I get, uh, Chuck Gilhar, could you do the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States flag. And under the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you very much. 
Um, do we have any other, uh, do we have any, uh, any comments from the public? Uh, um, the, the comments from the public all address agendized items. So I'll read those when we get to the reports on expenditures and projects. All right, very good. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from April, the April 1st meeting? Sure, so moved. And Mike, I have, I actually have a couple of nits in the minutes. That okay. Uh, would, would you like me to pull them up for people to see? Yes, please. Uh, no, that's, well, you can, but I've, I've got it. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me go ahead and put it. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I did find a couple of typos and errors too, so I wanted to correct, ask to approve them with those corrections, but I'm sorry, go ahead, Chuck. Oh, it's, Rand, it's Randy. Oh, Randy, I'm sorry. And now that you've pulled it up, I can't see it on my screen, so I'm trying to figure out how to oh. minimize what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Hit well, anyway, it, if, if you hit escape, Randy, it should allow you to um, see your screen again, and then you can minimize it. No. Oh, here we go. Yeah, thanks. All right. So it's on the uh, second page, about uh, halfway down where it says a new outdoor pool facility. Mm -hmm. The fourth line, it says estimated construction cost if 12 million. I think it's supposed to say is 12 million. Yes, uh, or of 12 million, I believe. Um, okay. And then, and then the next sentence is estimated total project cost. That should just be cost, not what an S. Correct. Okay. And then, Thank you and for then those the most two. important one is on the next page. Under terms, Chuck Gelhar, uh, I think he spells his name with uh, <laughs> two A's and one R. Thank you for correcting that one. <laughs> really important. <laughs> Um, I also found that uh, on page two, it should be soft costs, not soft cots. <laughs> and on the first page, I found that <clears throat> the students should be possessive. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I, we can easily make those e uh, editing corrections if we want to approve them with those corrections. So moved. Second. Any... Um... Anyone have any, any problems with um, approving those minutes with those corrections? Great, none. Hearing none. Minutes are approved. And we're up to Wendy. Hi everybody, thank Wendy. you Mike, nice to see you. Um, I just wanna just, um, we're so sort of joyful at the prospects of um, celebrating the end of this year by celebrating um, and all of our students, but specifically our promoting eighth graders and our graduating seniors. So there's lots of good news to, to um, highlight at the end of, of this tumultuous year. So I'll start off with just letting you guys know that um, last Friday night, we had um, a, a fun day for the eighth graders. Um, and that was a huge success. They came out, it was a carnival type event. Um, nearly all of the, the promoting eighth graders participated and all reports were that they had a great time. That was followed um, um, the next day with the, the campus going under another um, celebratory decoration. We had our senior prom, uh, again, sold out event. It was modeled on um, just a, a wonderful idea they had um, food trucks, um, a, a dance floor with a great DJ, a uh, Santa Monica style um, carnival games, a Monte Carlo themed um, where the kids could play poker and things like that, a lounge. Um, the pictures that I saw were, were just um, fun. The kids seemed to have had a great time and they are so deserving. Um, they, they, had, they bore the, the brunt of a, a senior year that was largely virtual. So it's been great to have them back on campus and we're really excited to do anything we can to celebrate with them. Um, all of the sports teams, once um, we reached the um, reopening tiers um, have been really, you know, um, active and, and doing a great job. We got to celebrate Randy's um, daughter 
um, for her thousand point. Was that what it was, Randy? Um, and and I know that there were several people there for the for that, and that was really cool. Um, and you know the 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 teams have been out there participating, showing great sports personship and and being really successful. And um, we'll top all of that off with. Um, uh, a graduation at the Rose Bowl for our seniors that we're really excited about. And um, our eighth graders will promote in Spartan Stadium, um, but because of capacity limits um, related to the virus, we'll have small school three um, followed by small school four. And that's kind of nice. Um, the small school structure really lends itself to two individualized promotion ceremonies. Um, we're gearing up for next year. And we plan to open fully um, with our traditional bell schedule, five days a week. Um, I did put out a survey to assess um, any interest in virtual instruction from families who have medical concerns or, or illness related um, challenges. And the response was really low. So I don't, you know, we will probably run that as an independent study program. We had about 15 students total in 712 and about 11 students total in our K through six program. So, you know, everybody's ready to return full bore and we're happy to make accommodations for those families who for some reason um, have a, an existing circumstance where they might need to remain virtual a little bit longer. Um, we've had an incredible uh, partnership with USC Verdugo Hills Hospital. As soon as we were able to um, uh, vaccinate our 12 through um, 16 year olds on top of our, the already allowed uh, vaccination of 16 and older, uh, Verdugo Hills stepped up, offered us four vaccination clinics, got a really, really nice note from Christy Cohen, who I've been working with to organize these clinics. And she said that um, they, have, they vaccinated over those four days, over 300 of our um, 12 and older students. And she commented that every single one of them was polite, appreciative, and just a model citizen. So to get that kind of report from an outside agency is just such a, a, a fulfilling testament to how great our kids are and how just, you know, they always represent us so well. So that's awesome. We're engaged in um, um, standardized testing right now. It's not our usual CASP testing, which is the state standardized testing. Um, Jamie had done a lot of analysis and we, if we had done the CASP, our results would not have been reliable. The data would not have been um, you know, really good data to use to assess um, learning gaps. So we have, uh, we are still doing standards-based testing, but it is through um, our grade book and test bank company that we use called Illuminate. Um, we're getting reliable data um, and we'll really be able to use that to report scores home so families know progress on standards and, and mastery of the grade level concepts, but it will also be very reliable data for our teachers to use to drill down and assess you know, how our progress has been um, with virtual and hybrid instruction, and um, we'll be able to mitigate any learning loss, loss or, or learning gaps that we identify. I don't think there will be many. When we talk to our teachers, um, we have told them all along that they could switch to essential standards. And, you know, and because it's, it was hard to navigate all of this, most of them kept their regular pacing guides and their regular curriculum delivery. And so I think that what we'll see is, is very um, little intervention that will need to be um, applied to our students to um, shore up any, any challenges. But um, I think great success and we'll be attentive and we'll be responsive. And the other piece that we'll really look at is there will be some social emotional learning and supports that we need to provide um, because of the challenges with anxiety and isolation and all of those things that have faced our kids throughout the past year. Um, other things that are, we're just happy to talk about, um, we uh, passed um, the diversity, equity and inclusion um, uh, guiding documents and the three-year plan on Tuesday night. That has been a, a challenge, but one that has, um, really produced a lot of um, productive dialogue in our community. There have been people who have been concerned that the, the work was, um, was a little bit um, too liberal, maybe um, too radical. We're very interested that we not be teaching critical race theory. And so we have gone back and made really strong assurances to the community that our work is centered on ensuring for tenants 
um, that our kids, um, that we're always making decisions on what's best for our kids, that we, uh, we are grounded in ensuring an academically rigorous and robust educational program, um, that safety and security is um, preeminent amongst all of our decision-making, and that you know, the, the DEI program really comes in under this fourth tenant that we want to ensure that our environments emphasize belongingness, um, emphasize wellness, and emphasize inclusivity so that every student feels like he, is a, he or she is a contributing member of the, the class culture, of the school community sense, and we'll work hard on this and we'll be very transparent with our community. We're gonna go out and, and develop an oversight committee about this size, maybe just a, a little bigger. Um, and that will be, will be very um, intentional in the selection of the membership so that it is balanced, that we have people who you know, have, have concern or wanna, wanna watch this with a, um, a very judicious eye and the people who are very much in favor of it. And so that balanced approach um, will allow multiple voices um, to oversee the work that we do on diversity, equity, inclusion. But I'm proud of our community. I think the plan that we have developed has definitely the LC stamp on it. And I think that's important because this, the movement on diversity, equity, and inclusion is not only um, a local one, but it's a statewide one and a national one. And I think we got out ahead of it early so that we could define it in terms of what is good for our community. And I think that's important because as we see potential state uh, or national mandates come down, we'll have already been ahead of the curve in order to really um, personalize and make this work um, something that we can prove to the community is being done well and being done in a way that everyone can embrace and see the benefits of for their children. Um, and then finally, we just are, are, we've done a lot of learning this year. And so as we go into next year, we wanna make sure that we keep some of the best practices that we've seen. Our teachers have gotten very adept at technology. A huge shout out to Jamie Lou Satter and her tech department. I don't think we could have navigated this year without them. Um, thanks to Gretchen and food services. That's not um, the focus of her job, but she's really done some heavy lifting. We've been delivering at times over 800 grab and go lunches district wide. And so they're you know, just really trying to continue practices that have met the needs of families. Um, kids have really enjoyed the, the office hours with teachers. And so just looking at anything, any silver linings that we can capture for this year um, mm -hmm. to maintain in our practices going forward when we return to um, our regular schedule. So um, I guess I'd like to end with just a, shoot, a huge shout out to our community um, to have things like prom and the eighth grade carnival. Um, boosters stepped up, PTA stepped up. The funding was you know, um, wide and broad. So was the volunteer spirit of teachers and parents. And it's everything that we've done and we've been able to accomplish through these challenging times has been um, a joint effort, a, an effort a part of our teachers, our staff, our parents, and then the shining star of our community, our kids. So I don't know if anyone has any questions, but um, just like to end this note, end this like a report with a, a note of gratitude to all of you. Because in the meantime, amidst all this, <laughs> and Mark and, and Harold have soldiered on with our, our bond project and we're, we're, we're going to see some great things start to happen. So thank you. Wendy, as, as the parent of two seniors, I just want to say thank you to both you and the, everybody at the district and, and the school. They've done a great job of making the most out of a really tough situation, you know, with having the prom, uh, you know, doing the graduation, the Rose Bowl. Uh, they're going to have a breakfast uh, or a brunch for the seniors. They did the uh, movie night, the uh, razor scooter races. I mean, it's just been fantastic. My kids are just having a great time, and it's what seniors should be doing right now. So thank, thanks to all of you for all your efforts. Thank you, Randy. We appreciate you. Anybody else? Uh, Wendy? Hi, yes, thank you, Chuck. Uh, Wendy, with regards to DEI, uh, how are we uh, proceeding in re uh, in comparison to say Crescenta Valley uh, and say a San Marino school district, or are they plotting down about the same path as us or not? Yeah, um, we belong to the Five Star Coalition, which is Burbank, Glendale, South Pasadena, and Pasadena. And we, we, we talk about this, it's an, it's an initiative at every single um, school district. 
um, and everybody's making progress. Um, and I think we've been most intentional with the work. Um, we, when we talked to Burbank and um, Pasadena, they were using um, consultants um, that had formerly been um, officials in the California Teachers Association who have, who have broken off and who are, have formed their own consultant. We met with them and interviewed them as, as potential guides and thought that, that you know, their perspective wasn't gonna work for our community. And so, <laughs> so um, we've got a very discerning view on how we want to approach this. Uh, we, we haven't seen anyone create guiding documents like we have that have really put the guardrails on the work. Um, and so I think that, um, you know, with San Marino, San Marino is in an interesting situation and I always want to, you know, they do great work, but I, you know, I just think for, for our community, they haven't been able to pass um, their, their parcel tax. And so they've had to do layoffs of over 40 teachers and their budget is, is, is in a little bit of a problematic state. And so their superintendent has resigned and they're looking for a new soup. And so they haven't had much time to, to focus on the DEI. So I think that puts them a little bit um, behind the eight ball because you know these initiatives, um, you know they're they're coming fast and furiously, and I think it's important for districts to be out in front of it. Um, for example, one of the things that you may have heard is that there there's a, a movement to um, sort of take a step back in the math curriculum under the guise of equity making sure that this is coming from the state, obviously not for us, and we will, we will advocate against it, but making sure that kids um, don't have any opportunity to differentiate in terms of accelerating through the curriculum until sophomore year, whereas our kids start to do that um, in seventh grade. And so I think that you know, we have vetted all of this through the community. We know what's the work that needs to be done. We know that we have to have a strong program in diversity, equity, inclusion. We need our kids to know how to navigate in the world when they leave us um, to be successful and to embrace diversity. But in the meantime, we also have to know where our community is um, in terms of you know, putting the guardrails. And so we have clear marching orders that we need to go up to Sacramento and, and be vocal advocates that we don't see equity at all in the, in the lens of limiting us on our math curriculum. And so um, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we've done this hard work. It's definitely been challenging. People have seen it be a little bit divisive in our community. That's not good, but we've, we've taken our lumps. We've done the hard work and we can start the healing. And we know, we, we know our limits and we know our charge. And I think that's a good balance. God damn, that was the right answer. <laughs> that was really good. Amen. Thanks. Do we have any other questions for Wendy? Thank you, as always, Wendy, for your thanks, Mike, for your report. Um, and let's move on to our report on projects and expenditures. Yes. Do you want the comments read before or after the reports, or what's your preference? I think we should probably do them before. Okay. So we have so we have them as we're listening to the actual report. Great. I will go ahead and uh, share that screen and. Uh, read through the comments. Uh, I can find that screen. There we go. Are those coming through okay? Yes. All right. I will read them. I don't know how large they are on your screen, but I will read them out loud. The first comment comes from David Haxton uh, regarding the report on projects and expenditures. I'd like to suggest a new chart for the school district to prepare for this committee, a chart that would enable you to see the forest, not just the trees. One column would list each project's estimated cost according to the district's facilities master plan, and the other column would list the current estimated or completed costs of those projects and any other projects not included in the facilities master plan. This would give you a better idea of how the district is going, doing in its spending and also allow you to foresee future funding shortfalls. The expenditure reports you are currently receiving provide no such perspective. The second comment is also from Mr. Haxton. Um, the Bond Oversight Committee should take a hard look at two aspects of the LCHS South Campus Improvement Project, both of which fail to benefit the school district. The first involves the expansion of the parking lot. In the lot southwest corner, there are batting cages owned by the La Cunada Baseball Softball Association built decades ago on district property. These cages are not used by the high school as they are too short and therefore useful only for young children. When built, the cages were on an unused corner of the grass behind the JV baseball field backstop. 
but with the parking lot expansion, these cages will now be located in the future parking lot and they will be taking up 14 parking spaces that could otherwise have been built there. The lot expansion could be adding 48 parking spaces without the cages, but instead will be adding only 34 spaces. Given the millions of dollars that are being spent to move the JV field and its light towers to accommodate the expanded parking lot and the critical shortage of campus parking, which will not be solved even with this expansion, it would seem only reasonable for the district to ask LCBSA to move their bedding cages. In fact, the district has a fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the district, but the district hasn't asked for the cages to be moved. The committee should assess whether the district is wisely spending bond money on this parking lot expansion when it foregoes 14 parking spaces for the benefit of LCBSA. The next comment is from Lori Moody. The other problematic aspect of the South Campus Improvement Project is all the money being spent to retain the JV baseball field. This field, despite its name, is actually used only by the freshman baseball team and it is used by them only for practices, not games, because the outfield fences are too short for games. Who is benefiting from retaining this baseball field? It's the same LCBSA that benefits from not moving their batting cages. LCBSA uses this field for its Babe Ruth League players who are not yet in high school and who don't hit the ball so far. If the district were to act only in its best interests rather than in the interest of LCBSA, it would build a practice infield behind the right field fence of the varsity field so the high school's three baseball teams would be able to practice together with two infields and their batting cages all in the same area. And without a baseball field by the parking lot, there would be a large grassy area adjacent to the parking lot perfectly sited for lacrosse and other sports, in a, for soccer, lacrosse, and other sports. In addition, since there won't be foul balls being hit into the parking lot, solar panels could be installed over the parking lot. This committee should assess whether the district is wisely spending bond money on retaining the undersized JV baseball field for the benefit of LCBSA. Hey, and Mark, um, we have one more um, comment, actually, and I just wanted to offer a point of clarification. Uh, when the public comments was uh, posted on the agenda, uh, it wasn't turned off. So it was submitted um, right before 7 um, a.m. posting. And also um, the date is, um, hasn't been updated on that one. But I do have one more comment that was submitted, um, if you'd like me to read it. I have one more on mine from a Lori Moody. Um, let me read that one. And then if that doesn't cover all of it, Nairi, you can Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, the last one I have on my screen, construction costs are coming in higher than expected. The bid just accepted for site work for the PCR modular classrooms is 25% more than the engineer's estimate, $7 million versus 5.5 million. So-called soft costs such as architect and project management fees also are higher than expected. The district just increased its estimate for soft costs at PCR by 20% from 7.1 million to 8.6 million. Given the increased construction and soft costs, are the bonds last planned construction projects, a two-story classroom building at LCE and classroom renovations at LCHS in danger of not being done. Did you have an additional one, Nairi? Yes. Okay. And let me share my I'm gonna screen. I'm gonna stop sharing. And the last public comment is from David Haxton as well. It says, at your last meeting, I submitted a comment criticizing the district's planned expenditures for the high school's new pool, expanded parking lot, and relocated baseball field, and asked the committee to, quote, assess whether the district is wisely spending bond money, end quote. In response, the committee chair said the comment, quote, I'm sorry, uh, assess whether the district is wisely spending the bond money, end quote. In response, the committee chair said the comments, quote, go way beyond our scope of what this comment is, end quote. And the associate superintendent said, quote, there is some questions about whether we're spending responsibly. I think the obligation of this committee is whether we are following the language on the bond, end quote. How can you call yourselves an oversight committee if you don't do any oversight? A, con a congressional oversight committee caught the Pentagon spending 600 per toilet, but you apparently would be fine with $600, to $600 toilets so long as toilets are within the bond language. You seem to think the extent of your oversight is simply to ask the associate superintendent if all expenditures are within the language of the bond and to blindly accept his yes answer. A, kindergarten, a kindergartner could do that. 
The district has spent $800,000 for safety and security at LCE, $200,000 for safety and security at PCY, and $500,000 for safety and security at LCHS. Do you have any idea what was this money was actually spent on or is just labeling an expenditure safety and security good enough for you? Don't be a rubber stamp. Make sure the bond proceeds are being spent wisely. And that's the last public comment. All right. Well, with that, let's go into our report on projects and expenditures. And um, if I'm not mistaken, um, the, the comments, um, but especially the first two or three were actually the same comments that were presented to us at the last meeting. Is that, isn't that correct? They are very similar. I don't know their word for word, but yeah, word they're for word, but they the are very similar. So, all right. All right. Let me uh, share my screen on the uh, project status report. Uh, hold on here. Slide show. Okay. Uh, and I'll put it into. And then, all right. Is that coming through as a slideshow for you guys? Yes. Visible? Okay. So we'll update this. Harold and I will kind of go through the project status report and uh, going through the projects that are currently under construction. Uh, the one. Finishing up bidding, actually the 25th, correct, Harold? The bids close on May 25th? Um, yes, that's correct. Yeah, so um, that will close bidding on the 25th where we had multiple parties interested. We'll see what we actually have come in. Our estimated construction cost is gonna be 12 million, the project cost at 13.9 million. Um, and we are looking to take that contract and that contractor to the board uh, at our June meeting and get construction started probably mid-June. I think the meeting is on June 8th and probably another week or so before they get up and running. Correct, Harold? Uh, that's correct. Okay, third week of June. Um, so we got through DSA, uh, worked through a lot of uh, details there, and that's what pushed our bidding process out to May 25th to make sure we had all of those ducks in a row. And then, so there is the slides. If you have any questions or anything, let us know. Familiar slides. Uh, this area here is where the pool is currently, and that'll be the kind of second phase of the project, which will be more in the, that starts about summer of 22, correct, Harold, and goes into fall of 22? Uh, yes. Uh, Palm Crest modernization is getting underway. Um, the estimated construction cost for that is 24.8 million, uh, total project being 33.5. Design completion was last fall. And we had DSA approval. We've actually started construction. We took advantage of the small footprint of students and we're getting the utilities uh, upgraded. There's also some ADA ramps that need to be done, but we'll do those this summer be because students are on campus now. Uh, but we have to totally upgrade the electrical system uh, and that's all ready to go. And we've been doing the dance with Southern California Edison to get all that timing to work. So those materials come in in a timely fashion over the summer and we can get everything set up from a utility standpoint before school starts again. The other big project over the summer will be moving all of the portables off the kind of back side of the campus down onto the field while the construction is going on for the new two-story building. Um, so that'll be a, a big lift this summer uh, between moving furniture, moving buildings, rehooking up buildings and re reinstalling furniture. Um, so we've got a full summer ahead of us and we'll start that construction and the foundations and then the modulars are being built up in Manteca, and those are scheduled to be delivered uh, first floor in September and second floor in November, if I'm right, Harold. Uh, well, the first building in September and the second uh, building will okay. be in November. So one wing, first floor, second floor is September, and then the smaller wing, first floor, second floor in November. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. And we've been working closely with the city on just getting buildings moved up Palm Street and set onto that campus. Uh, uh, the city is actually gonna be doing some work along Foothill Boulevard at that time. And that was supposed to be done, but their bids got delayed. And uh, thank you to Mr. Haxon for kind of bringing it to our attention that that was going to be going further into 
our construction period. So we were able to work closely and continue to work closely with the city to, to navigate the challenge of moving basically 20 classrooms, 40 halves <laughs> up, up the hill and setting up cranes and lifting them onto the site. Um, Mark, I have a question on parking. Sure. Um, with the demolition of the old district office and uh, it looks like it's a couple of years out to actually do the paving, are you going to be able to use that area just for straight, just for parking? The, uh, I, so I pulled up that slide, the, the DO is gone. We're gonna be putting down temporary asphalt so that we can use it as a parking space from the years ahead. Uh, it'll also be our construction site. We'll have some trailers there for the work and all as well. So um, we're working on getting that paving done. That's supposed to be done this month, correct, Harold? Uh, the paving is already done. Oh, okay. uh, right now we're just working on the driveway. Got it. I was there last week and hadn't seen it yet, so it must have just gotten finished. <laughs> yes, that was a couple of days ago. Okay. Likewise, I would. I was by. I, I was by last week and didn't see it as well. And I just know that I know the the lack of parking at Palm Crest. So yeah, all the movement of of relocatables, and I was curious about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to jump back a slide to kind of show where the. Um, the, moder the kind of overview of the whole plan. So this is the work we'll be doing in the year ahead. Uh, that's the new building. And this longer one is what arrives in September and the shorter wing arrives in November. This is some new parking here, new courtyard, ADA ramp. This is all part of the new construction. Here you see the temporary interim housing. Um, and then after this is done, we'll move on to doing the finger buildings, these original buildings and upgrading and modernizing those. And then we'll start updating the parking lot and drop off. And depending on how the, all that schedule goes, this little pink in the front, this is where the utilities come in and it'll consolidate all down. Cause I think right now we have several services. I don't know if it's three or four between the old DO and we're going to consolidate that consol consolidate all of that down. So that work is happening currently. And this is where the new uh, equipment will be from SCE. Demolition of the old district office, as you've seen, that's all gone and the um, paving is now in. That's good news. Thanks, Harold. Uh, and then this is the project going on currently. Right now, um, these ADA ramps here at the end of building eight and then between the, the wings, we had to upgrade the ADA accessibility and that's a real challenging campus for that. Um, those will be done in the summer. This electrical work and trenching is pretty much done just waiting for the equipment to come in and then get all the hooking up done. And shout, Harold, if I'm misspeaking. <laughs> uh, you, you're doing very well. <laughs> and here's the uh, interim housing. So uh, it'll be a tight year on the campus. We're working with Corey Pack, the principal, to maybe have a few more games installed and things for the kids. But there will be 12 portables down here on the field, uh, which will take that field out of commission for our joint use uh, users as well. Uh, and That'll be through next summer uh, that those will be used. And then we'll assess as we go into modernization of the other buildings, we don't think we'll need to have them. We should be able to remove those and repair the fields. But if we need to leave a few there, we can assess that as we get closer to that date. Mm -hmm. And here's the new two-story classroom. So that will be our lift in the year ahead. Getting all that ready so that students can occupy it in August of 2022. Any questions on Palm Crest? La last phase there. These are the renovations. You can see there are those ramps that we'll be working on this summer. And then there's the new drop off. So we do lose parking in the process of making the drive through safer and separate for students, but we will gain parking up above. I think net net Harold, if I remember, it's about eight spaces we gain. Uh, yes. So not a lot of improvement of parking, but we fortunately didn't lose any and we will have a better drop off that hopefully will keep kids out of that parking lot and hopefully make traffic flow through there a little more smoothly. There, there's a little better view of it there. So future projects we're working on and kind of in the planning and design stages, uh, Paradise Canyon modernization. We started working uh, on that, doing some meetings with community members and staff. It's, we've kind of got a design uh, committee with a variety of 
stakeholders from um, the, the site, from families, from neighbors, uh, as we look to how do we go about modernizing that campus. That's a ways down the road. That's a series ahead of us, but we're going to start the design because uh, there is a lot of input into that process. And I think uh, the additional time will suit us well. And it's a lesson we learned as we did Palm Crest to kind of just have more lead time in that. Uh, so we're still working on that. We have some initial concepts that the committee has presented to the board and the architects, uh, uh, Gonzalez Goodell Architects, GGA, uh, are putting together preliminary cost estimates. And now that will be part of the conversation as to which route do we take. Uh, on the high school, we are the planning is all done for the guardrails and the deck coating repair. And that is a project that we will do probably in phases over the next couple, three years, just because of the accessibility. Uh, it really needs to be done during summer, and there's a lot of use even in summer, so we'll have to close down sections so they can uh, repair the spalling, uh, freshen up any of the rebar that's exposed, seal it, and then put a fresh deck coating on, and then replace the railings so that they meet current code and have proper spacing. And there's a sample of kind of what those corners and all will look like. I believe those were in our previous, previous presentations. Any questions on kind of the projects? at this time. Oh, are we now? I'm sorry, you, you weren't sliding through it like I was. No, you were. I was? You, okay. We were fine. Because mm -hmm. on one screen it shows one thing and the other it shows another. <laughs> okay, any, I'll stop sharing. Any questions on, on Let me, uh, if not, I'll kind of go into the expenditure report if you want to move into to that. And there are no public comments at this time other than the ones that we Thank you for checking me on that. Uh, and let me share. Um, and would love to have your feedback. Uh, on, on the new format and all. So uh, Gretchen put in a lot of time to kind of reformat things, work with Harold, and it's kind of a little more ours. She got to do a little graphic design as well in the process. So thank you, Gretchen, for <laughs> jumping in with that. Um, and this is as of May 7th. That's the, the data point for our. Um, most of these we left the same from the old format that the company provided for us. Uh, we left hey, Mark, it. Uh, yes. You know, uh, on the previous, <coughs> excuse me, on the previous page, that little graph where it shows on the right, it shows interest income or interest earnings of a million yes. two. My, my only question on that is that, does that interest get added to the amount that's available for us to spend on top of the, the, the bond offer, the $149 million bond offering? Yes, it does. We actually have a line item for interest in our revenues. And that's really about the only revenue we get unless we issue bonds. What do you expect that number to be in total over the life of the bond? I think, Harold, you only had uh, like $150,000 a year put in there, if I remember correctly. And we have our cash flow. We'll share that with you as well. And I think there's a line item for that on there. But uh, I'm, I'm remembering $150,000, Harold. Is that about right? But, yeah, that's what we had. Um, I think and we're realizing we, more. We, Yeah, it is coming in a little bit higher uh, uh, for now. That's uh, only because we have uh, uh, a hefty balance uh, of the uh, funds uh, uh, left, uh, but as we spend more, uh, then uh, obviously the, the amount of interest uh, get lower. Um, but uh, we are, we are uh, getting more interest right now than what we had uh, initially projected. And that's by design because we, uh, we don't know what the uh, market would bear in terms of interest, so we purposely estimated it low. Okay. So do you think over the life of the bond will be under 2 million or, or more, more than 2 million? Uh, we'll likely be more than 2 million. Uh, but uh, I think we, uh, when, when we show the cash flow, it'll show the total amount that we are anticipating in interest. Okay. Thanks. And I think with the current rates, we have those expectations pretty low. <laughs> All of our funds are in the LA County pool. That's where they're held there. And I, most of them are, probably in the half to three quarter basis points. So. I think the, the interest that we're anticipating right now is 2.3 million. Over the life of the bond. Correct, and you'll see that in the cash flow. 
and it's a hundred thousand that we're projecting out a year. Thank you. And um, we'll talk more on these additional funds and the cash flow. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. This, these are the other funds that we're using. Yeah, the report we provide is on Measure LCF only, but these are other funds that also help with the with capital projects. Uh, let me rotate this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, so this is kind of the new format and um, we kind of broke it down by project and site and then total. Gretchen, do you want to speak to what you did and how Correct. you Correct, so this it? is this is La Cunada Elementary School. You'll see this broken down by project. If there's a blue line on the bottom of the project total, that means that, it, that the project is completed at this time. There's no additional expenditures or encumbrances. And then Mark, if you'll scroll down to the bottom, Mm -hmm. I went ahead and put a total and then go a little further down. And here's where I've added on the left-hand side, the active budgets, because we, you were talking about um, in the past, we wanted to know kind of what the overall is. So you'll notice for LCE, the majority of the projects have been completed. There's no balance. However, the bottom one, the technology, um, I'm sorry, it's that 724,000 for project okay. 92600. Mm -hmm. That is a project for technology that we have not started yet, but we do have the budget there. And then below that are the future projects. So you'll see that there is budgeted allocated for interim housing, modernization and new construction for LCE. But again, those are projects we've not started, but those budgets are reflected there for your um, information. Now, those budgets will also have, because they're based on these numbers and they're several years out, we have contingencies and inflation factors that Harold puts in to allow for those to increase over the term of the bonds. Okay, so that is LCE. Okay. Are there any questions on LCE? We can kind of go site by site before moving into Paradise Canyon. Um, <clears throat> I had a, a quick question. If it's if it's listed in the budget, does that mean it's in that it's been accounted for in the current issuance, or is it possible that it's in the budget and it's, it hasn't been issued? The bond hasn't been issued to cover that. It has not been issued. That is correct. And you'll see that on the cash flow as to when we expect the issuances and when we expect those expenditures to then hit. Okay. So then there's Paradise Canyon. Paradise Canyon. So you'll notice on the um, the first one, we do still have an encumbrance out there of $3,000. And that's why it's in a peach color because it's still an active project. Roof repair. And I think that's an example. That was partly paid for by bond dollars on uh, the fencing project there and the landscaping improvements that went with that. Site utilities, the safety and security. Uh, and then I think down here, the lunch shelter was kind of the biggest project we've done so far. And there's a little bit left out there under architecture fees, but it's predominantly closed, although it doesn't get out of the peach quite yet. Correct. It most likely has been sent out, but when we close the books, we'll clear that out. So, and then, go ahead. So, Mark, you know, the, one of the comments, the public comments was, uh, you know, this sort of the classification on the safety and security. And we have that on, I think it might be on all of them, or at least a, a, a few of them. And is there, can we make that a little bit clearer what exactly we're talking about in the description? Sure. We can, we can update those uh, because Safety and security is such a broad thing. Like at LCE, part of it was the playground and making the blacktop safer. Is a, you know, and some of it is more security based, like the fencing. So we can update those to be more precise as to what that specific project was. So yeah, I think it would be useful. And then also, I was just wondering. I noticed like the architect fees for the fencing um, for PCY is. Um, Shoot, I can't remember. Let's see. Is this else? Uh, blocking out elementary, the architecture fees were eighty-one thousand for the fencing, but they were like forty-one thousand for PCR. Why would there be such a, a variance in architecture fees for what appear to be similar type projects? So let me go to the fencing for uh, fencing is up above, right, Gretchen? Yes. So here are the fencing for. Yeah, if you look, go to the first page with all the numbers on it, you see 
Oh, go, sorry. Down, go down. Go down. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. So under fencing, like the third, is that the L LP, third line, the uh, fourth line right. item? LPA is eighty-one thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Architect and engineering costs. Right. We also then, did some additional work on the interior. We had to do some remodeling of, of entryways and hallways and the bathroom. And did was any of the playground in this part, Harold? The playground was not included. It's uh, primarily the interior uh, reconfiguration of the admin area uh, to accommodate the fencing uh, that uh, uh, fostered this increase uh, in cost compared to Paradise Canyon. They had to reconfigure the, the whole office area so that the, the fencing would, would work in terms of you know, entering the campus and exiting the campus with redesign of the speech pathologist office um, and that whole um, vestibule that you, you walk into. And so there was a lot, I think a, a lot more architectural um, a time and attention needed for um, LCE. So all of those other, those other costs for things other than fencing, are they part of the fencing expenditure and budget? Uh, they yes, they were because they were part of to, to get through the building and check in, in the office and leave and be in, in, in the building, we had to rearrange and redo the layout of the office. And, and we did that into some the, ADA issues as well, which upgrading bathrooms and stuff that fell under that as well. So, and the idea is that we wouldn't have done any of that work if it hadn't been for the fencing project. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. So we can go through the security, safety and security, Gretchen and Harold and I will kind of break those down because it is a broad category. I mean, we're looking at security cameras, we're looking at fencing, we're looking at just things to keep people from injuring themselves like redoing the playground at LCE. Any questions on PCY? As we go through, there's there's their their kind of budget summary. And Palmcrest Elementary School, and very similar projects. Uh, yeah, and you'll see here again uh, the fencing fees at Palmcrest were lower, but there was little to do on the interior spaces. And that also meant less DSA as well, I believe. The sewer uh, was partly paid by, for by the bond. We also had one of our other funds that you'll see in cash flow was a sewer fund. So between the two of those, uh, that's how we funded the sewer. Was there, I didn't notice sewer cost for the other schools. Is that something that's in the future or they've already been? They're left? already hooked up. Uh, Palm, uh, Palm Press was the last one and it didn't sound like a very exciting project, but they were quite pleased when that happened. <laughs> yeah. Site so utilities are un underway. That's the current work going on there. Uh, parking lot and drop off, um, very little on the expenditure side, most of it on the architectural design. Uh, interim housing is getting underway and we'll start having charges against that. And the same with the, the modernization less so. Uh, the new construction though, we will start seeing all of those. Our biggest ticket item under new construction is the modular buildings that are being factory built up in Manteca. So that's a uh, $10.3 million encumbrance. And again, in the summary there, uh, not much in the future projects because we're pretty much underway completely for all that we expect to do at Palmcrest. Any questions on Palm Grest? And then La Pinata High School, um, and the general kind of surveys and, and gener generic things we did to begin, the multi-purpose room and the food services, a few lingering things there for the architecture fees and some PA equipment. Uh, we'll get those done up as we close the books this year. Band room is all completed. A lot of the band room, it's called the band room, but that also had the parking lot that used to drain into the band room and cause us a lot of problems with water damage. So um, that was fixed as well. So there were some kind of infrastructure drainage issues dealt with that as well, not just up updating the band room. Hey, more hair there. Yes. You, you probably are, I know you're aware because we've <laughs> emailed on it, but 
the boosters is is also spending or raising a lot of money for the band room, different upgrades and everything. Uh-huh. Is how does that tie into this? And is there how are you isolating what we're raising money for versus what the bond measure is paying for? We would keep that as a designated gift and go towards the improvements. I've been talking with Wayne Page about that kind of those sound rooms and stuff. And mm. that's really not in the bond per se. So I need to find out the funding, whether there's room here or not. But w- that's one of the things we do have to be careful of on encroachment. But we're also looking at what other funding sources do we have a- as well, like some of those other funds that are not bond dollars. It would fit mm. under the definitions of the bonds probably, but we have to also make sure that we don't start putting too many things into there and draw down our our resources. But I, um, I will be actually meeting, just met with Wayne Page and uh, Jason Ito and Randy, um, our maintenance guy, uh, and Chalmers is a con- contractor we use both with the bond and otherwise to kind of get some ideas on what it'll actually cost to do that project. So then I'll figure out what is the booster's contribution and what other things, what can we contribute and what of, what of that total project can we accomplish hopefully over summer. Okay, thank you. Uh, field repair had a little bit funded out of the bond. Most of that was out of fund 40. The lockdown access control was all the new locking mechanisms, uh, still a little bit lingering there. And the fencing also uh, pretty well completed, but some, some pieces still to finish off with the contractor Golden Sun mostly. All right. Bleachers, we've only done a study of it. We really don't have that on the horizon to do immediately, but we've, we've started doing some work with the architect on that. And then the new pool is obviously the, the major one. Um, the encumbrances are, are relatively small, but once we get that contract in and the bid closes on the 25th and the board acts, these numbers will jump up before our next meeting in the fall. Lighting retrofit, most of that was done with state money, but we wanted to broaden the scope. So we used a little bit of the bond money to get some more energy efficiency. Uh, That total project was over $600,000. So a little bit to finish off all the areas we wanted to came from the bond. And I think a little bit on printing and graphics down there. So there's a summary for LCHS. Any questions on that site? And then this is just a breakdown by vendor. So district wide. So this is district wide, right? District wide expenses. So, so how does the format work for you versus the other one? Do you find so it's more Mark, helpful? Mark, yes. keep going down. So keep going okay. down. So this is district wide. Uh huh. Okay, keep going. And then this is keep going. And then this is where you get the summary of everything. So all site by site. All sites and the budget, and you'll see the budget on the far left side. So. so now you can ask how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let, let us know, I mean, if it kind of meets that expectation, if there's some other tweaks and adjustments, if you prefer the older version, uh, we were looking to disengage from that contractor. Uh, but if that's the preferred version, we can keep them on board. So. Mark, and you should just mention the savings um, by having yeah. it done in-house. Yeah, the other vendor is probably about $3,000 a month. Now, there are other things they can do for us, but we haven't tapped into those benefits, and I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I'm not sure if we would. Uh, I think it's 3500 a month, Harold? Um, it's, I believe it's 3500 a quarter. Yeah, 3500 A quarter. I'm sorry. Okay. So I, was, I must be thinking of the multi-year total. So um, anyways, let, wanted to know... Uh, I, I like this format. Okay. Okay. I, I, I really like this format that, that presentation. So, is there anything else needed to kind of help the committee with assessing our expenditures? I well, like Randy's suggestion of it being more specific so that they yeah. actually know what comes under the categories. And I think that would address um, some of the concern in the public comment. And I think um, that's predominantly around safety and security, am I right? Because that is a pretty broad one. Yeah, there was another one that seemed a little bit vague. I can't okay. put my finger on it right now, but um, 
Let's see if we can find it. It said modernization, I think was the was the title. So just something a little bit more descriptive than, than the okay. modernization. And I think the others by and large seem like they were fairly, you know, obvious, but you know, those it was just the it was just the modernization in the uh, in the uh, um, safety. safety and security that seemed a little vague to me. Well, I think safety and security can definitely be um, detailed as to what safety and security was done at each site. And modernization, I think, is probably just a jargon word for Harold and us about modernizing the existing buildings versus building new. But we can make that more clear that that implies upgrading existing buildings, not building new ones. So mm -hmm. um, what we could do, Mark, is provide a description of the project um, at uh, maybe at some part of the uh, um, uh, the update of the report. So we, okay. we could uh, capture uh, the scope of the project. For instance, the modernization project, the scope would include uh, lighting upgrade, uh, repairing, uh, plumbing, casework. So we could, we could provide the complete description uh, of that uh, category of work. Uh, I think that would give the uh, committee an idea of what, uh, what that project will entail. Well, and I think, you know, that would be good, as, not just for the committee, but when the public looks at these, if they tend to look at them on the website, you know, the committee, we have a conversation, but the public doesn't necessarily hear all of that. So that would be good if somebody opens the document to have a better idea of what those words mean and what they look like in actual products. Mark, could you, um, and Gretchen, can you also find a way to call out the line items where the, where the bond funds are not fully paying for, um, for an item so that we can we can tell oh that's a partial payment um it would i think that would be helpful and that would be shown on the cash flow yes the document you're going to see next oh okay. but on this report can we just asterisks or something things that are have multiple funding sources we can absolutely mark under the uh, under the uh project description does it make sense to also include a percentage of completion as you're um, as you're discussing the project for the one for the ones in peach or are you talking about the first presentation uh, the ones in peach the ones in peach yeah okay in, in other words you're going by adding a description of what what it includes just a just a line of and you're 80 percent complete at this time that would really give anyone who looked at it online an idea of how close, how close they were um, on it. Good, I think, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Between Harold, Gretchen and I, we can get an idea of where those projects are and just add that as, a, as an asterisk or an explanation below. Yes, Jacob? Mark, Gretchen, great job. Um, it's so hard to address everyone's concerns on one document everyone has an angle or, or, or a perspective. What you're doing serves our purposes very well. One quick suggestion, move the last slide, Gretchen, to the front. Put, put the last page you have with the big millions and the big dollars, which would be page 24. Move that all the way on top, because if anyone in the community is concerned about what we have and are we within budget and whether we're tracking things as best as we can, it addresses right there. It shows the budget and how much we're spending and how much is left. And if we're really off the budget, maybe on that first page, let's just boom, address it right then and there if we're off budget. So if anyone in the community has issues, that's the first light they see. If they wanna address it, they're welcome to, of course, sending comments as we've been receiving them or even join us at future in-person meetings. And let's address it because I think we've done a fabulous job in the past and we'll keep doing it. But of course it's construction. <laughs> Everyone knows prices are going uh, <laughs> crazy. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, that's my comment. I think that's a, a good idea because it's a nice synopsis to start the report with and then go into the granular. I think that would be very helpful and very much friendlier for a community who's looking at it. Good, thank you. Mark, just a point of clarification for me because I'm not real familiar you know, with the uh, origins of this stuff, but the budget numbers that are in here, where did, 
Where did the, those come from and who approved that? Uh, the, the budget numbers come started with the facilities master plan, but they've been updated by Harold as we get into the project. Uh, and they actually evolve. Harold, how do you adjust them and tweak them as we get into the project yeah. more? Yeah, so the, the, the budget numbers, um, uh, as well as the cash flow, they, they're more living uh, documents that uh, uh, periodically have to tweak uh, based on current circumstances. Uh, and we do our best to try to anticipate uh, uh, costs and try to anticipate any uh, items that uh, could uh, change uh, the cost of a project uh, and throw that uh, in a budget, uh, uh, in the budget when we uh, put together the budget. But uh, as you know, things do change as we progress through design. Uh, and accordingly, we have to adjust the budget to, uh, to reflect those changes. Uh, and periodically we present uh, to the board uh, the, the whole uh, cash flow and the program uh, and uh, uh, provide uh, a recommendation as to what those projects will do uh, and how the, the budgets uh, have changed uh, and, uh, and the impact of the budget change to the cash flow. So does the board actually approve those changes to the budget or is that this committee's responsibility or who, who approves the, it? The board is the one that is charged with the total cost of the project and approving any budget uh, for the project, the committee's uh, role is to uh, make sure that the uh, expenditures are consistent with the bond language. Okay, thanks. And speaking of that, is this a good time to ask Mark to confirm that these expenditures do align with the bond? They, they do align with the bond language and we make sure of that. And that will be stated in the report too, which is the next thing I was going to share for your review. Um, it's Mark, did, you wanted, did you still oh, want to do yeah, the cash actually, flow? That's right, thank you. You guys also had asked to see the cash flow, correct? So, just, just before that, uh, just a quick, quick, quick question, uh, Mark. Um, can you get out the crystal ball and talk just a second about uh, material availability and material uh, cost and the rise of cost or the, and what that's going to do as you look forward to some of the projects? Yeah, I think, you know, we've heard about the cost of lumber. We had issues with steel last year when we were doing the fencing. Uh, the, the pandemic has slowed things down. As you mentioned, all those ships sitting off the coast waiting to come into the harbor. So we are seeing upwards pressure and in inflation. Uh, Harold just sent us uh, an article on construction cost inflation. You want to talk to that, Harold? That was a... Uh, a yes. Oh, we are beginning to see uh, a, a lot of cost impact. Uh, we're seeing some uh, projects coming in uh, a little bit higher than what we, are, uh, we were anticipating. Um, one of the things that uh, we have done is we use a delivery method, a standard design bid build. Uh, it's a, with that delivery method, uh, we shift a lot of the risk for cost increase and material increase onto uh, contractors, but it doesn't come without a risk to the district. Obviously contractors, as they experience uh, uh, future cost increase, they try to uh, put that in their bids uh, and factor in some contingencies for those cost increase. So uh, in any case, we, we, we would end up uh, seeing uh, some of that reflected in the, uh, in the bid price. Uh, bid price. Uh, the problem is the contractors, uh, on the other hand, uh, they don't know at the time of bid what those cost increase might be. So they have to kind of take a, uh, I guess, a wide guess as to how they go and keep, keep uh, uh, themselves in business should those uh, future cost uh, increases beyond their, uh, their bid prices. Uh, but right now we are seeing those. Uh, the other thing that we are seeing is also uh, finished goods are taking a little bit longer uh, to get delivered because there is a backlog uh, right now uh, with uh, factory deliveries because of COVID. Uh, and uh, a lot of contractors are seeing that manifested uh, now. Uh, 
but we we um, do a very, as as best as we can in the planning side uh, and try to get those projects out early enough uh, to try to uh, at least uh, maintain our delivery schedule on the projects. But uh, there's definitely uh, some. Uh, um, perhaps some problems that could uh, uh, come up as we, uh, as we get onto these projects. Well, and I think one of the things that we have in the budget, <clears throat> excuse me, also is the contingency that Harold carries along too. That's more than $15 million over the life of the bond. We put away 10% of every issuance for contingency to allow for those types of factors, inflation, uh, other surprises that we might run into if we had hazardous materials and things like that. Mark, it might be helpful if we sent out to the committee um, that construction inflation alert that Harold shared. It was really interesting and I think it gave a good broad picture of what's happening in the market and I think the, the committee might like to see it. Excellent. Thanks. That's a good idea. And here I'll work with you. I know you sent that to me, so either I'll get it out or I'll connect with you. To I, see I've you got it. I can help you. have got it. it too. Okay. Okay. The other thing that was uh, requested was kind of talking about cash flow, and I just wanted to kind of share with you what our sheet is. Gretchen and Harold, Harold had has his, and Gretchen has updated it with the, all the most current information. So I was going to share that if we have some time. I know we're a little over, or I can bring it back to you in the future. What would be your preference? I, I, I think we should take a look at it right now. We'll do. All right. All right, is that coming through okay? Yes. Okay. So this is, um, you'll see multiple tabs under here, which is, you know, Gretchen's magic behind the scenes and, and all the wizard behind the mirror, uh, where she puts all of the data in to feed through here. Um, the blue is our first issuance, purple is series, the second issuance, series B, and then you'll see them going across just, uh, different issuances, that's how we show those on the top. Uh, total general obligation bond, we anticipate 145 million coming in. Interest, we talked about earlier, 2.3 million. These are some of the other funds. Deferred maintenance is uh, fund 14. Uh, that's that a typical district roofs. fund. Pardon me? That was for the roofs. That and was what we spent on the, the roofing, energy. right? That's a typical district fund for roofing, for carpet, for things like that, that we typically run into, but we're merging some of those functions with the bond. Developer fees we anticipate over the life of the bond series to be about 3.2 million. Uh, those come in around 250 to 350 a year, depending. We've not uh, tapped into those at all yet. Yeah, Prop 39 uh, pretty much has all come in and been spent. Uh, and then Fund 40 or some of those other capital funds that the district holds. Uh, this is just a general capital fund. Fund 40.2 was for the uh, sewer, sure. right? Sewer. Fund, fund 40.4 was for the field. field. Um, and we have a fee, we keep a fund for that for keeping up the stadium field. So those are some of the different funds we have. And then going across, you'll see the different revenues coming in. And Gretchen, I'll let you take it. It's your, and then your if baby. You continue to slide across to the right since we're talking mm -hmm. revenue. You'll see how it's kind of dispersed out over the years. The interest that we talked about earlier is actually at a hundred thousand going out. And then the line um, six are the developer fees going out. Okay, so that's revenue. So 2020 oh, right here is where we are currently, right? Estimated actuals. Correct. So through 2019-20, our actuals, column I-2021 is our, and that we're working on right now, our estimated actuals. And then 21-22 is currently the budget that we're working on. Okay. And then the um, beyond that are just um, projections. And when the board adopts its, its annual budget for the regular general fund, they adopt all of the fund budgets, this one included. Yes. Okay. And next year is when we will start tapping into fund 21.2 or the second series. We've not tapped into the second series yet, but we are budgeting those next year. Okay. And then moving down is when we get into the expenditures. The first column E, I'm sorry, the column E, well, I should go back, column B, are the project numbers 
that tie to the expenditure report you saw along with the descriptions or the titles, column D. And then column E are the budgets, again, tying to the expenditure report that we looked at. The very top number, the 35 million, that's the total for the high school projects. And that is a total of all the projects you'll see down below there. Then again, moving across are the actuals. And then column I is the estimated actuals and then what we're budgeting for the next year. And then if you slide to the right mark, you'll see the future projects that at least we have slotted for cash flow. Okay, and if you slide back to the left, and if you just scroll down, you'll see the same for each of the sites. We should mention that this spreadsheet is a dynamic spreadsheet. It's linked to the project budgets and it's linked to the expenditure uh, report. So as uh, those uh, numbers change, it uh, uh, changes the cash flow and you could see where we are at any given point on the cash flow. Correct. And I update it on a weekly basis. And then the actual cash flow there you'll see the, the net cash flow is just comparing the revenue to the expenditures, but the accumulated cash flow is the overall look. So you'll notice it is positive. This Until is very- there, this Where is, we, we, it looks like we're gonna run out of cash. You might have to slide it over Mark because uh, our pictures are showing yeah, in that spot. There you go. Over here. Yeah. So it looks like we have a shortfall in that year of 6.5 million. If you scroll back up to the top, you'll see what year that is. This is very helpful. I, I was, can you guys share this, uh, you know, send, send this out to the uh, committee so that, cause it, it'll be, I think it'd be easier to look at if we can scroll through it and everything ourselves. Correct. Cause it, I, yeah. I realize it's hard. Um, yeah. But yes, absolutely. So but, you'll yeah, notice that 22, 23 is when we are running into that shortfall of 6.5 million. So right now what it's telling us is that we need to issue our second issuance possibly a year earlier. Our th you mean our third? Our, th our third, possibly mm -hmm. a year earlier. And again, as we, as we move through it and we get closer, we'll know whether that's actually true or not when the expenditures come in. But th that's kind of how we're using the cash flow tool. Yeah. One more thing to point out, uh, point out, Gretchen, if you go all the way to the bottom of the cash flow. Mark's driving. Okay. <laughs> all right. So this is where we kind of look to see, even though you see that, that shortfall of $6.9 million, uh, uh, column I, but when you actually look at the the accumulated funding that we have available, you could see we don't uh, really have a shortfall. The reason the shortfall of six point nine million dollars is shown is because we are retaining uh, ten percent of the bond money as program reserve. So for cash flow purposes, we would have spent the program reserve. Uh, in that year just to meet cash flow, but at the end of the program where you see contingency summary, you see that there's a total program contingency of $14.5 million. We have about $4.2 million that's unallocated. That means that we have $18 million uh, remaining overall in funding that we would have not spent uh, if all the costs uh, is as shown on the uh, uh, expenditure report or uh, on the cash flow. But obviously, by the time we get to the end of the project, uh, we know chances are we would have spent the $18 million. But right now, we do still have about $18 million uh, in reserve total. And, and Randy, I'll be glad we'll share this with that construction document and stuff and send that out to the committee as well. And it's a very hard thing to share on screen because it's such a cumbersome document, but we'll send it out. And then we'll also, even when we meet in person again, see what next fall looks like, we could actually bring one to you if we talk through it there. Okay. Yeah, if you can include it in the, in the package for the meetings going forward too. A absolutely. Uh, any other questions on that? Mark, is this, is this posted online? Uh, no, it's not. I don't believe it is. But I think because we used it in this meeting, I'll, I'll make a PDF at least of this page. 
to post online? Yeah, I mean, this answers a, lot, a number of questions and comments that were that were made. Yeah, as far as the big picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have some wiggle room and stuff as things change in pricing as well as scope. But, but to that point, those are those are very uh, important things to keep track of as we go through this program. So, okay. And then the last thing I had to share was the actual committee report. And that is, uh, was in your packet. It's the same structured port report that we've had in the past. And if you're available on the eighth mic to present it, that's when I was planning on taking it to the board. So you could present your report and I'll get you a copy to sign. Right. Were there any questions or suggestions on the report? Tuesday the ninth. Yes, I am available. Okay. Um, do you? The question I had: um, Have we um, the audit last year? I believe the audit coincided to where the the audit also was able to. We were able to say that the that the audit also showed all expenditures were that there were no audit exceptions. Yeah, we did. Uh, we presented the audit to you guys in January. We actually took it to the board this week, um, and we talked to that in the meeting. But we could easily say that if you'd like to add that to the report, or yeah, I, I, I think that I think that would be good just to add add a line to the report that um, that the audit um, audit showed that all expenditures well there were that there were no exceptions to the audit in the audit. All right. Then if you want to motion to approve it with that addition, then I will add that addition to it and run it by you before I give it to the board for. Great. Uh, so you'd like, uh, you'd like a motion to approve with that uh, addition? So moved. Can we get a second? Second. All right. All, any, um, any abstentions? <clears throat> any problems? Approved, thank you. All right. So uh, the last thing was the future proposed meeting dates. Um, what, what is your time schedule for putting out um, uh, the call for new members? I was gonna do that in June and all the people who opted for the one year are welcome to re-up if they choose, so. Right. But I, I was going to do that. We have to do that for the parcel tax and the bond oversight. So I'll be doing that next month. Those will go to the board probably in August or so, and then we'll get those people on board for our upcoming meeting in October. Great. Just, just out of curiosity, why, why do we need to wait till October? That seems like a long uh, time spread between now and October. Is, is there a reason we can't meet like in August or September? There's there's no reason we can't. That's just the pattern we've had. So I was just following the pattern from last year. So if we want to bring that up, that would be up to the committee. It's a good idea with all that's going on to have a check-in point when school starts back up. Um, Wendy, when are you starting school? We open August 16th. So if we were to give you guys a couple of weeks to get School started. Uh, do it in do it in September versus October. That'd be great. Yeah. And you ba we're basically doing it once a quarter. Right. So we get a little more crunched in the spring, but yeah. yeah. So do we want to go to stay with the January date as well then? Yeah, I mean, ideally, you know, December would be better because it's it's sooner, but then, you you know, but it's holiday time. So, uh, yeah, you know. the other component in January is we usually get the audit right in mid-December. So we can share that out. It's a, it's a good one to bring the audit to. 
Okay, well, um, let's just, let's move the first meeting into September. Okay. You can, you can throw a date out. Um, Let me look. Uh, oh, hopefully it's early enough in everybody's calendar that they haven't booked it. <laughs> Would we like to do more like, um, and we can do earlier in September, like the 9th or 16th. And that way we'll be just past school year. Maybe we can actually maybe meet at a site or see some projects. Yeah. I like that idea. That's good. I yeah. like the 9th. September 9th would be great. September 9th, I have a chamber exec meeting. The 16th, I'm good. Jacob, is the 16th still, is that okay for you? I may be, I may be traveling, but I'll join with the Zoom meeting if need be. Well, I'm, <laughs> I I have to reapply. <laughs> right, correct. <laughs> so so you you go first, Mike. <laughs> uh, does the sixteenth work for everyone who's still on the committee? Okay, let's go with the sixteenth. We'll do. And 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 with that, I would like to thank um, Aaron and Jacob and Chuck for your membership. Um, I know with uh, Jacob and, and Chuck, we've, we've been on it for a number of years um, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, so. And, and likewise, and I also wanna appreciate Wendy and, and uh, Mark and this community is very lucky to, uh, to have you involved in, in this. So thank you very much. Um, and I also think it's really important to get more people involved. So I won't be applying again. Um, we'll miss you, Chuck. Yeah, You've been great to work with. Thank you for all you do. I might still drop a bond packet off at your house just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be okay. laughs> I, I agree with everything Chuck said. I wish more people would be involved and, and commit and uh, Wendy, Mark, uh, Harold, Gretchen, you do a fabulous job. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to work with you as well. All right. Anything else for the good of the cause? Okay. With that, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. Second. All right. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned. All right. All right. Take care. Okay, Mark, we'll be in touch. Yeah, we'll connect. Just let me know. All right. Um.